Uh, I am extremely happy with where things are right now. Um, this is my third BTF actually this year. Um, this is my first time to the European Theatre. Um, so far we have been, um, we've crushed every high headquarters direct admission that we've had. Uh, we've currently gone 27 for 27 sorties, uh, which is awesome. Um, the, uh, the PA team that's been out here, especially Combat Cam, has done a fantastic job capturing what the team both in the air are doing, but also the team on the ground. Uh, it is a full team effort to get that scorecard. Uh, everyone from uh, our mission support group team, uh, our communications folks sent up the comms, our um, Persco team getting us in process, our maintainers on the ramp uh, getting the jets green, uh, getting the parts in from our little high logisticians, as well as the air crew and obviously yourselves uh, up in the air actually executing the mission and uh, taking pictures of it. So I must admit, our hosts have been phenomenal here. We could not have asked for much more. Um, Colonel Saeed and the 11th Group, uh, who are uh, basically the base commanders here at Marone Air Base, have been very welcoming, they've been very accommodating. Um, we've, uh, we've been able to integrate with some of the local mayors as well. They've came out, they've toured the airplane. Um, we've uh, done multiple static tours to again explain the bomber mission. Uh, just the geography of where Spain is located in this theater as well is perfect. We've been able to go to AFRICOM, we've been all over UCOM uh, since we've been here. We've been integrating with all our allies uh, in the NATO um, construct. We've also um, uh, flown some incredible sorties. Uh, we were able to honor the fallen of D-Day by overflying Semiraglis, um, which was a huge honor. I was on that flight. That's probably one of my favorite flights. Uh, we also did Allied Sky, where we were able to fly over all um, 28 nations that are out here, at least, our uh, NATO members, and integrate with all their fighters. There was over 90 plus fighters that came out from, I believe it was 21 of the nations, um, to escort us through their airspace, which was absolutely phenomenal. So it, the, uh, the experience that the air crew get from that by um, talking on the radios to foreign countries, uh, transiting through international airspace, um, it's, you just can't get that train anywhere else. What I think some of the highlights for the, that this BTF accomplished, we actually brought weapons with us um, for this uh, BTF, so that means the MUNS team comes out, they, uh, they help load the airplanes. The very first week we uh, went and integrated with um, some Latvian JTACs in Latvia, uh, which is exceptional, so we were able to drop some uh, high explosive ordnance there in the UCOM AOR. Uh, then later on we were able to go into the African AOR and work with some of our allies there in the African AOR as well um, by dropping some inert weapons uh, with some of their ground parties as well. Um, so obviously whenever we can uh, bring weapons and uh, practice that skill set uh, with our allies, uh, that's always a big plus. Also, uh, like I said, I've already mentioned Ally Sky, that was, uh, that was a very, very awesome sortie uh, that we did. But we've been uh, doing that pretty much at least two to three times a week, uh, doing high vis um, integration exercises with our allies and just basically showing that the long range strike capability uh, can be launched from Spain. Uh, throughout anywhere in this part of the world um, and then obviously recover back. This airfield is well suited for us. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's been a very, very successful BTS so far. It's also the first time that buffs have been out here in about five years, I believe. So uh, it's kind of good to um, uh, exercise the gray matter to figure out how we're going to get B-52 operations out of this base. Uh, ID some of the uh, areas that might need some more improvement and then also obviously some of the, uh, the successes, the pros and the cons associated with the base. The whole construct of a bomber task force is to be a little bit more flexible, a little more agile, uh, go to areas where we don't normally operate out of uh, and prove that we can actually still launch long range strike out of those areas. So obviously typically we'd go to Fairford, we'd go to Guam, those are very established bases. So uh, what was unique about this one was we were able to come to a base that hadn't um, had bombers operate out of it for a long time and still be extremely successful, which again is a testament to the entire team that came out here with us. Um, I would fully anticipate, just based on the geography of where Marone Air Base is located in the UCOM and AFRICOM AOR, that um, bomber operations could come back to this base easy. Like I said, I've got to just throw a shout out to the whole team that's been out here. Like I said, we don't get the scorecard that we've had, um, that we get out here without every airman um, contributing to that mission. Um, we've had a very, very focused mission set. Everyone has uh, been fully linked into the mission, both uh, on the flight line, both in the back shops, um, in AFE, weather, um, our SAMS team, everyone that is associated with the mission has had their eyes on the mission and has been felt a part of the mission. Um, all the documentaries that you all have been doing on those, I really appreciate that's on DVIDs because again, it just shows the impact that they have on how it uh, 
how crucial every airman is to a bomber task force. We really do bring everybody for a reason, and if anybody fails, the whole BTF can be in jeopardy. So the fact that the entire team has been out here, uh, has been so successful, is just a testament to every airman that has come on this BTF.